Hello everyone and happy Mother's Day, especially to my black mamas out there. Today we're going to be talking to a few black mamas and celebrating all things black motherhood. Being a black mother in America can be rough, like statistically rough. I'm talking three times more likely to not make it through childbirth than a white mother. But here's the thing, black mamas are built different. They're fierce, they're strong, and they love harder than anyone else. They fight for their health and for their babies. So for Mother's Day, we're gonna chat with some incredible black mothers about their journey through motherhood and maternity health. Meet Suzette. After building a happy family and life with her husband, she suddenly became a widow and left to raise their young son alone. So we'll start with how many children we have. I have one son. So I met his father um, back in 2007, mm -hmm. and we started dating. We were dating probably about a year or so um, okay. before I got pregnant. Okay. Um, then I got pregnant, but I was pregnant before I actually had my son. Okay. Um, but it was not a good pregnancy. Why? Why was it? Um, I was really, really sick. Okay. Real sick. Um, like I couldn't even hold on water, food, nothing. Um, so I actually, we, well, me and him, we actually made the determination to terminate the pre pregnancy. Just because you just wasn't doing well. I was not doing well at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, then here come along my bundle of joy, <laughs> Robert. Mm -hmm. Um, but I affectionately call him Maurice. That's his middle name. He is named after his father. Yeah. So was that pregnancy better? It was. It was, it had its ups and downs. Um, okay. Sometimes I was sick. Um, sometimes I wasn't, but I will say I did have a lot of morning sickness, a okay. lot of morning sickness. Um, I was sad at times because I, I, my body was just taking on a lot of emotions that I didn't know it wasn't ready for. But um, every day his father was a big support real big support um he was there with me every step of the way i don't care what i wanted if it was ice cream to pickles <laughs> <laughs> to just get in the car and just drive yeah um it was whatever he was really really supportive yeah when i went into labor i will never forget um it was some type of bas uh, football game going on at the time and um I didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know that, you know, you're supposed to get up, walk, go outside. Um, but I was told by a mutual friend, um, oh, go sit in the bath water and out of kind of fast and, you know, make, make your contractions come a little bit faster. Um, so I did that. But as his dad sat on the couch and was watching the game, <laughs> checking on me here and there. But um, so I would go outside, I would walk up and down the street. Then when I came back in the house, I would go sit in the hot tub of water. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I kept feeling the contractions, but I didn't know like, okay, is this too much or too little? When is it time? So we had just decided to just go in to, you know, get checked to see if I was ready. Cause the way I was feeling, mm -hmm. it was like I was ready. Yeah. And so, so then I went in and the nurse, they checked me and it was like, you're only one centimeter. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, yay, I did something. And they like, like, no. <laughs> you got to get to like five, right? Exactly. <laughs> she was like, no, ma'am, you have to get to five. And I said, okay, well, what are we going to do about that? Because I'm here, I'm ready. And she like, well, we got to send you back home. And I was like, send me back home to do what? <laughs> and she was like, well, you basically can keep doing what you're doing. Um, and so then I looked at her and I said, well, can I have some Tylenol? And she said, no, we can't give you no medicine. I was so much in pain. Oh, the cramps, yeah, they would not stop. And wow. I, it was a nothing that you can do. <laughs> nothing. And it was nothing no one can tell me to soothe it. <laughs> um, but I was just like, because I, I didn't know what to really expect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I went back home and went right back to doing the same thing and mm -hmm. went outside, walked, came back in, sat in that tub of water. But I, looking back, I wouldn't do that. I would do it different Yeah. because I think from sitting in that water and then exposing myself to outside, mm -hmm. I ended up catching um, bronchitis oh. with him. Yeah. Yeah. And two double <laughs> ear infections. So. so how did you... Like, what made you sit in the water? Who told you that? 
this lady, she was a friend and she, cause she had a baby. So yeah. she was like, Oh, do this. Cause this is what I tried. So mm. I just do it. And then my son's father, he didn't rebuttal it. He was just like, cause he ain't know either. Right? He, he didn't <laughs> he like, yeah, if that helps. Yeah. I mean, and I, I really can't tell if, if it really did or not. Cause mm. I was sitting in the hot water, but I still would feel, I think, I guess for me, I wanted the pain to just stop. Yes. And that's not what was going that's on. That wasn't happen. reality. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, to her, it was like, no, it's making you dilate more. Okay. So you can hurry up and get to the five and yeah. then go in and voila, yeah. now we can have the baby. Yeah. So, and I didn't understand that part. I was just like, I just want to stop hurting. Yeah. I end up going back in. Um, and then, then they checked me again and it was like, okay, you're at five now. Okay. So then now we were starting the birthing process and then I had to get the epidural and that was an experience <laughs> because they told me you have to be still, you have to be completely still because this is the part where women can become paralyzed. Okay. So I took that part really, really serious. Um, but then during the middle of actually pushing and was trying to push him out, I had to get the epidural again because I still was feeling yeah. it was not working. And okay. and he they were shocked because it was like, wait, we gave you a yeah. lot for your body weight and yeah. everything. It was like we gave you a lot. Um, but yeah, I still felt that pain. I yeah. <laughs> so you had to get another epidural. Yes. So I had to get another epidural and um then we went back to push and push. And I finally did after 26 hours, <laughs> being in all that labor. Yeah. 26 hours. 26 hours. I'll Jesus. never forget. I was tired. Yeah. It was almost two, three o'clock in the morning. So I was exhausted. But then I had to breastfeed because I did tell him I wanted to breastfeed. But I was so exhausted at that moment. I did not want to breastfeed. Okay. I told the nurse, I was like, well, you guys got bottles. Just give him a bottle. And she was mean. She said, no, <laughs> that's not what we're going to do. You said oh, you want to breastfeed. So they were sticking to your do. plan yes. that you said. <laughs> okay. Yes. So I was like, okay, whatever. I had an attitude. I could have did. But I was like, okay, she's right. I yeah, did, say did say I was going to breastfeed my son. So <laughs> that's where me and him connected. Because mm. I didn't hold my son, like, I guess most mothers, once they actually give birth, and then they go over, they clean them up, mm-hmm. you hear them cry. And then they're like, oh, you want to hold you? I said, no. Wow. I was hurting. Oh, <laughs> you was in pain? I was still in pain. Yeah. And I was like, no, not right now. <laughs> I just wanted the doctor to take care of me now. Because yeah. I was still. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. You was in no, pain. Yeah. I like... told his guy, when I said, you can hold him. Yeah. I told his dad, get your son. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Mama, mama ain't got it right now. Mama, I didn't. I'm being honest. That's fair. I didn't. Yeah, that's fair. Very fair. I end up having to stay over more um, because normally when you have a a normal vaginal birth, Mm -hmm. you can get discharged the next day, but not me. Why? Um, I had got up to go to the bathroom and I rolled. They, you know, they put him in a. Nice little pen which you roll around with you. And I took him with me and I went to go sit on the toilet. And then when I got to get up, I fell. Mm. That that second round of epidural, it numbed my legs. I didn't have no feeling. How, many, went, how long after the birth was that? It took at least that whole day. Okay. The doctor wanted to really monitor that because he wanted to make sure I wasn't anything damaged or you know like okay. we don't want her walking we want her to walk away today you know yeah, not, <laughs> not, not paralyzed, paralyzed. Yeah. right so they really monitor and kept me um so because i remember taking him to the class with me to learn the the uh, that was the next day mm-hmm. and i had to be rolled around i could not walk like everyone mm-hmm. else was you know walking into the i had to mm-hmm. um be you know in a wheelchair mm-hmm. um but after that, it, it finally wore off. Okay. It finally wore off. And so the doctor's like, okay, everything looking good. I think we're going to let you get ready to go home. So after you had your baby, what was like mothering like? Mothering. He's 19 now. So. He's 19 now. <laughs> um, it was fun. 
I really would have to say, I mean, if I could have did it all over again, I would. Mm -hmm. I, I went and take that and say, oh, no, it was just, a, you know, all bad experience besides the pain. Mm -hmm. um, but it was fun. Um, I, but I think I, anxiety, I let my anxiety get to me mm -hmm. a lot. So I wouldn't allow him to do certain stuff like, oh, don't, don't. Okay, wait, he going to fall. Mm -hmm. And so his dad was the other piece to be like, no, you got to let him fall and notice that he fell so he can get back up. Mm -hmm. And so by him stepping in, because we only had his dad for the first three years mm -hmm. and that was hard, but I'm glad for those three years that he was able to tell me that because then I would have been this mother that always trying to, Oh, don't, Oh no. You know? Yeah. And then he wouldn't learn. Yeah. And so, and he used to tell me he has to learn how to think for himself. And I'm like, he's only a baby. How does he think I have to think for him? Yeah. And his dad said, no, just, just trust me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, okay. So for those three years, yeah, it was it was the best. It, it was rough after the three because his father passed. Mm -hmm. um, when he, yeah. When he just was Just literally when he turned three. Tell me, tell yes. me about his father and the story around his passing. Um, so his father was diagnosed with lymphoma which is a cancer that is curable. And he had one in front of his stomach and one behind his stomach. Okay. Um, I think the issue was that we caught it late. Because okay. one day I came home, I had got off of work. He was already off of work and he was laying on the couch and he wasn't feeling good. And he said, you know, my stomach hurt. And I said, okay, well, you want to go to the doctor? Or, or in my mind, everything is, you can fix it with a tongue. And he was like, and a vernus. <laughs> he like, honey, a tongue is not going to fix this. And I'm like, no, okay, well, I'm not at all. <laughs> so so y'all went to the hospital. So we went to the hospital. Um, they ran a few tests, but then they ended up keeping them that night. Yeah. So I was devastated because I'm here with my, you know, my baby, and. Here we are in this hospital and we have to leave without daddy. Mm -hmm. So I was devastated, but I was yet praying <laughs> like, okay, Lord, um, you're going to have to fix this one because I can't fix it. Yeah. I have this baby and I just yeah. have, he need his dad. Yeah. So please fix this. So then they start doing more tests um, and it came back to where they needed to do a biopsy. Okay. And the first biopsy, it didn't read anything. So three biopsies later, on the third biopsy, wow. yeah, three, finally it came back that it was lymphoma, it was cancer. So the doctor came in with the good news, like, oh, this is curable. But in the transition, me taking him in to the hospital, he caught pneumonia. Oh, Everybody know pneumonia yes. is not, I mean, you can have walking pneumonia, but you can still die from. No, people die from pneumonia all the time. Yes. So with that, when they said, okay, he have pneumonia, we can't start chemo mm. because we got to combat yeah. pneumonia first. Mm -hmm. And so they start putting him on all this medication for pneumonia to try to get that, you know, to get his lungs cleared up. Yeah. Um, and so it was working because he would, I would go and check on him in the hospital, but then I seen him like transition before my eyes because I know what he looked like mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. the sickness mm -hmm. but it's like within the one week he was in a hospital he just changed oh. his appearance yeah and we were planning my big dream wedding that I wanted um because he had already proposed to me on Mother's Day and um and I was planning my wedding but the way the doctors, they were like, he might not make it. So if you were going to get married, you could just go ahead and get married in the hospital. And that's what we did. Wow. So, and I took, we took a picture. Um, I couldn't, you know, like take a standing up picture. He was laying in the bed. And so I just kind of leaned over and it took, gave me my one <laughs> wedding picture that day. And I sat there and ate lunch with him and he couldn't eat anything because he was like, he was losing weight. So he was changing like right before my eyes. Yeah, very quickly. And I was just trying to keep it together. Yeah. It was so hard to keep it together. And I know it's hard for him because he like, he wanted to give me the world and now he's, he has to leave the world. So I 
had enrolled in school. Um, I wanted to get my associate's degree. But the day the doctor walked into our room and looked at me and looked at him and said, more than likely he's going to die in the hospital, I disenrolled. I was like, oh, okay. And I just kind of checked out from that yeah. point. Was it was it because he had the pneumonia that kind of sped speed, up that process? Because they couldn't pneumonia. even treat the cancer We now, couldn't right? even start on the cancer. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, something that's curable. That's what was like. That's, and then he yeah. was a health. I call him a health nut because he didn't do no beef, no pork. Mm. It was just always chicken or seafood. He didn't smoke. He didn't drink. Like, I'm like, how? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't wrap my mind around it. Yeah. Um. So I just felt, I was upset with God for a long time because I was like, I just, you know, it's not fair. Yeah. The hardest decision then, um, as me being his wife for only a week, um, I wanted to keep him on the machine. And he wrote on the advance directive, turn everything off. And so me, the doctor and him was arguing, even though he, he couldn't talk because yeah. he could not, he couldn't talk. The respiratory therapist would come in and check, you know, his breathing and all that, but he couldn't talk at all at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so you couldn't, as his wife, override his wish. I was trying, and I said, what is, you know, and I didn't want to <laughs> sound trying. mean, because, you know, people say, well, that's what you got married for, so you can be in control. And I said, no, yeah. that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I just thought that that would take on another part of a wife's duty that I can, you know, speak for him. Yeah. And the doctor was like, he wrote this on here. So as long as he can write this on here, mm -hmm. he's telling all of us, this is what he wants. Mm -hmm. We have to honor this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but I'm his wife though. <laughs> I'm in control right now. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no. You feel like maybe he was giving giving up on himself? Or yes. And I would, uh, like literally, we he was laying there in the bed and I'm standing here and the doctor's standing there and we're having this three-part conversation and I'm looking at him like, what is she doing? Like yeah. you have your son. And that's yeah. all I kept saying. But he was looking at me like I'm tired. Mm -hmm. And I could see that, but I was in denial mm -hmm. because I was like, no, we're going to put your son first. Mm -hmm. I can't do this by myself. I'm just mom, but he needs a dad. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but <laughs> he was just like, you know, looking at me like I'm, I'm ready to go. And I was trying to hold on. So after his passing, how did you then raise your kid? After that, I knew I couldn't stay in our apartment that we shared together. So um, I just, you know, my, my dad stepped in. Um, and my dad is so strong. <laughs> yeah. Will man. So he like, oh, you and my grandson come to stay with me. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm, you know, because I'm like, what? I'm grow. I just had a baby, had a husband, <laughs> married, and, and became a widow. Exactly. But I stayed there. I stayed there with my with my dad. Um, moved into his house um, and slided. That's how I got to Modesto. Okay. Um, and uh, I stayed for about a couple of years to finish school. So I did go, go back, back and re enroll to get my associate's degree. Um, I have my master's degree now. Oh, so I just kept congratulations. going. Congratulations! <laughs> you just kept going and going after that. I did. Um, and I actually start school again on Monday for my doctorate. So doctor in what? <laughs> Come on, doctor. <laughs> Educational leadership. Congratulations! Really, yes, that's incredible. So I said I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm trying to push myself because I'm trying to, you know. Example for my son, yeah. um, because he's now in college. Mom, you are in a PhD program. Your son yes. is 19. Tell me about yes. your son as like, we talk about him as a kid, but like, mm -hmm. how is he now? Like, when you look back, are you like, oh, I don't know how I did that, but you did it. So yes, it, I mean, for a long time, I blame myself. Oh. Um, His father just being sick and... I always sat there and wonder, well, what if I would have took him to a different hospital? Mm. Maybe you should have did that. Or mm. so I, you know, I kind of blame myself for that. And then I had to release myself from that because it wasn't my fault. 
you know, and then I felt bad for my son because I really feel like males, boys, they need their father. And we haven't really had a conversation. Like he haven't asked me like, mom, how was my dad? Hmm. Tell me about it. So I'm waiting for that. Okay. Yeah, I'm waiting. And at least I'm in a better headspace. Yeah. So I'll be able to, to have that give, yeah, to him. give him those answers. Yeah. Yeah. But mothering is still mothering. <laughs> you know, he, he worked part time. He, he goes to school part time. And mm-hmm. now, I mean, where I thought he would probably hang out more with his friends, but he's an introvert like me. So. Okay. He's not that sociable. Only a couple of few. Okay. Um, but now he'd be like, "Mom, uh, let's go to the movies." And I'm like, oh, "You want to go to the movies with me?" That's so cute. <laughs> yeah. That's so really cute. Um, so now we just do our movie dates, uh, food dates. He like, "Mom, I I buy you this. You, oh. Like, what you want to eat?" And yeah. That's nice. So it's like. Okay, I'm gonna pay back for taking care of my <laughs> handsome son. So, Aw, yeah. he still wants to hang out with mom. He still wants to hang like, out with spend mom. Spend time with you. Because he don't so. have a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I know that's probably gonna come. If there was someone in your situation, um, what advice would you give them? Um, keep God first. Mm-hmm. And know that everything happens for a reason. But the number one thing I would say, stay strong and try to find a lesson in whatever it is, Mm -hmm. Um, because there's a lesson in life. There's a lesson in death and there's just a lesson on every day, Mm -hmm. you know, just everyday living. Mm -hmm. If you're a new mom or um, existing mom, enjoy it because the time goes by so fast and I feel like I lost some of the that time because right when after his father passed I kind of just went into this other role like okay I got a survival mode Mm -hmm. and it wasn't like oh capture this and capture that and pictures and all I didn't get to capture a lot of that Mm -hmm. because it was my mind was in a whole totally different light at that point so I will say and if you have your you know your, your child's father um in your life enjoy it Enjoy it because you can't get time back. Well, thank you so much.